Hello, this is Sebastian from Native Instruments. In this part of our Controller Manager video tutorials, we will explain how to map commands in a third-party MIDI controller. This can be a track-to-ready controller, such as a Denon MC3000 or Numark Mixtrack, or it can be any type of surface controller that supports MIDI communication. Unlike the mapping of a Native Instruments controller, which is explained in the corresponding video linked in the About section of this video, the mapping of a third-party MIDI controller is more complex. For the sake of simplicity, we will provide a simple example on how to map the functions of Tractor's loop recorder by modifying an existing MIDI mapping. To begin, you need to add a mapping for your MIDI controller. If you are using one of our Tractor Ready controllers, you can load its mapping via the Tractor Setup Wizard menu. In the About section of this video, you will find both a video and an article with instructions on how to import a Tractor Ready mapping as well as a link to a list of all Tractor Ready devices. If you wish to add an empty or existing mapping for a generic MIDI controller, there you will also find our overview video and article on how to use the controller manager. Once the mapping has been set up, make sure your controller is connected and recognized and then choose your mapping from the device list. In our example, we are using the Tractor Ready Newmark Mixed Track controller, so we will choose the corresponding mapping. Next, make sure that the in and out port fields are set to the ports of your controller in order to establish the communication between your device and the software. Since we have loaded an existing mapping, you will notice that the assignment table is already populated with several input and output commands. Each of these commands is mapped to a specific button, fader or knob on your controller. Our goal is to define a set of buttons, which we normally do not use, and then remap them to the set of commands that operate Tractor's loop recorder. In our example, we will map the loop recorder commands to the top left button's view, which toggles the browser view, and effect, which toggles the leftmost button on the FX unit number one. With the aid of a modifier, we will be able to add two separate functions to each button. Recording a loop as primary function and changing the size of the loop as secondary function, both mapped to the view button. Playing back the recorded loop as primary function and deleting the loop as secondary function, both mapped to the effect button. To begin, we need to identify which MIDI messages correspond to the view and effect buttons in order to replace their corresponding assignments with the loop recorder assignments. For this, we will first create our loop recorder assignment and map it to the view button, so our mapping will have a double assignment. We click Add In and choose Record from the list of loop recorder functions. Now we activate the Learn button and press the View button on the Mixed Track controller. The Record function is now mapped to the MIDI note F6 on MIDI channel 1 via the View button on the controller. Now we click on the header of the Map To column of the assignment table to sort all MIDI messages in ascending order. In this manner, you are able to group the double assignment for the View button together. Since we want to replace the Browse View function with the Loop Recorder Record function for the View button, we select the assignment for the function Only Browser On, which toggles the Browser View, and in the Device Mapping area, we click Reset in order to reset the Only Browser On assignment so that it is no longer mapped to the View button. Now we have only one assignment for our View button, namely the Loop Recorder's Record function. Finally, we set a comment for this assignment in order to find it quickly in the assignment table. We will name the comment simply Loop Recorder. Since the Record button acts as an on-off switch, we set the interaction mode to toggle. The assignment field in this case can only be set to global. For many other types of assignments, you would select a specific deck here. We will now create our next assignment by adding the function play pause and mapping it to the effect button. As we can see, the MIDI identifier for this button is note D sharp 7 of channel 1. Since this button also acts as an on-off switch, we again set the interaction mode to toggle. Finally, we label the assignment of the loop recorder group 
and reset the additional assignment mapped to button 1 of the effects unit 1, just as we did before. We proceed with the function called size. Size determines the length in bars for the audio material to be recorded. We will map it to the view button, same as we did with record, so the view button is now mapped to two different functions of the loop recorder. We make sure to select button as type of controller and to set the interaction mode to ink or increment, which means that the next available value is set for each press of the button. This way we will be able to access all values of the size parameter from one button. We again label the assignment to the loop recorder group. Finally, we create an assignment for the function delete. Triggering delete will erase the recorded loop. We map this to the effect button, thus creating our second double mapping, and leave the interaction mode as trigger. Lastly, we label the assignment to the loop recorder group. As we have now mapped all of our assignments, we turn off Learn Mode. Note that if no material is buffered in the loop recorder, the delete function won't do anything. We have now mapped Record and Size to the View button and Play, Pause and Delete to the Effect button. In order to trigger these actions separately as primary and secondary functions, we need to define a modifier. The Controller Manager allows you to set up to 8 different modifier assignments. Each assignment can hold up to two different conditions, which allow users to potentially create very complex mappings. Most controller mappings will already implement a modifier assignment associated with a shift button or similar. As you can see, the Numark Mixtrack mapping already includes a set of modifier controls, which we can incorporate to our loop recorder functions. Modifier assignments are usually implemented in pairs. One of them is set to value 0 and the other one to the value 1. These values represent the state of the condition. Either the state is 0, meaning that a specific button is not held down or toggled on, or the state is 1, meaning the button is held down or toggled on. In order to define which button is mapped to a specific pair of modifier controls, you can either consult your controller's documentation or find this out by creating an additional command and comparing the value of the MIDI message. In our example, we have found out that the modifier number 2 assignment is mapped to the mode button, which switches between manual and auto loop mode. It is located below our loop recorder buttons, so we will use it to construct our modifier conditions. We want our secondary loop recorder assignments to react to the modifier number 2. For this, we go back to the details of these assignments. We will start with size. Under modifier conditions, we choose M2, which represents our modifier number 2. We set value to 1. Next, we do the same for the delete assignment. Finally, we set the value of M2 to 0 for the primary assignments Record and Play Pause. Now, the primary functions will only react when Mode button is not pressed, so the modifier state is 0. The secondary functions will only react when it is pressed and lit up, so the modifier state is 1. We can now do an initial test of our mapping. First, we press the Mode button repeatedly and take a look at the modifier state. The state of modifier number 2 is toggling between 0 and 1, just as we wanted to. Now, as we first press the Mode button once so that it's illuminated, and then repeatedly press the View button, we are able to change the size of the loop. If we now press the Mode button again so that it's not lit anymore and then hit View, the recording will start in the loop recorder. We briefly perform the same test for the Effect button to make sure that the modifier mapping has been successfully implemented.
Note that the modifier button is acting as a toggle since the interaction mode is set to direct. You may set the interaction mode to hold, in which case the state of the modifier condition will switch from 0 to 1 only for as long as you hold down the mode button. Bear in mind, however, that not all hardware control elements on your controller will function correctly with each type of interaction mode. Now that we have all our input assignments set and functioning, we will assign our output assignments. An output assignment, in this case, enables visual feedback by controlling LEDs on the controller. Just like we saw when testing the modifier condition, the LED will light up when the corresponding assignment is triggered. To quickly create an output assignment, we select one of the input assignments of our loop recorder functions. Next, we click the Add Out button. The first option will be the one matched to the input assignment we just selected. This is the correct choice. Now, the output assignment has been created as shown in the assignment table. Same as with the input assignments, we enter loop recorder as the comment for the output assignments. Next, we repeat the same for the rest of the assignments, except for modifier number 2. Finally, we make sure to reset the output assignments of the previously mapped functions to ensure that the LEDs follow the logic of our loop recorder functions only. You can now monitor the state of your mapped functions directly on your controller. For example, when we record a loop and then set it to play, the effect button will remain lit for as long as the loop is playing. Please note that not all controllers offer visual feedback via LEDs. Consult the manual of your hardware controller to learn more about its capabilities. Note that all the changes made to your mapping are saved automatically. Once you are finished editing your mapping, you may also export it as a TSI file to create a backup or share it with other users. You can do so by clicking on Edit, Export, and then saving it to your hard drive. In the course of this video, we have learned how to modify the mapping of a third-party MIDI controller. Feel free to experiment with different modifier conditions and tweak the details of individual assignments to create unique ways to interact with the Tractor software interface. If you are using a native instruments controller instead, you can watch the corresponding video linked in the About section of this video. There you will also find useful links to related articles in our knowledge base as well as a video explaining the general concepts behind Tractor's Controller Manager.